नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर यूट्यूब चैनल डॉक्टर अभिषेक कुमार In this video we will go through the topic fever of unknown origin or pyrexia of unknown origin its definition classification cautious approach to the case of pyrexia of unknown origin and its treatment this is asked as a long answer question in many university exams fever of unknown origin definition it is defined as fever 38.3 degrees celsius or 101 degrees fahrenheit for at least 3 weeks failure to find the diagnosis even after 1 week of inpatient investigation moving on to its new definition or classification into categories fuo is classified into following categories one classic fuo two nosocomial three neutropenic four fuo associated with hiv infection Let's go through each one of them. One classic FUO is defined as fever greater than 38.3 degrees Celsius which remains undiagnosed even after the 3 outpatient visit. Two nosocomial FUO, it is defined as the temperature 38.3 degrees Celsius in a hospitalized patient infection which was not manifested at the time of admission remains undiagnosed even after 3 days of investigation. 3 neutropenic FUO it is defined as the temperature of 38.3 degrees celsius in a patient whose neutrophil count is greater than 500 per liter or is expected to fall that level in or 2 days and remains undiagnosed even after 3 days of investigation 4 hiv associated FUO it is defined as temperature of 38.3 degrees celsius over a period of more than 4 weeks for outpatients or greater than 3 days for hospitalized patients with HIV infection which remain undiagnosed even after 3 days of investigation now moving on to its causes the most common cause of fever of unknown origin are infections firstly infections infections may include a bacterial infections like tuberculosis typhoid syphilis dental abscess infective endocarditis sinusitis B viral infections like HIV, chronic hepatitis, Q fever. C fungal infections like candidiasis, eukormycosis, blastomycosis, histoplasmosis. D parasitic infections like malaria, toxoplasmosis, trichinellosis, leishmaniasis. B rickettsial infections. Secondly, neoplasms like lymphoma, leukemia, colon carcinoma, renal cell carcinoma, liver metastases. Thirdly, inflammatory conditions like systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory disease, Crohn's disease. Moving on to approach to the case. Firstly, clinical history. Take a detailed history of general symptoms like fever, weight loss, headache, rashes. Ask for any contact with infection tuberculosis patients or contact with animals having brucellosis. Ask for any history of sexually transmitted diseases. Travel history, drug therapy and occupation as farmers are more prone to leptospirosis. Veterinary workers are more prone for brucellosis. History of recent dental treatment suggests that it is endocarditis. History of immunosuppression therapy as HIV infection steroid therapy which are likely to be opportunistic infections. History of any previous surgeries, abscess, trauma, endoscopy or gynecologic procedures which are likely to be intra-abdominal abscess. Now moving on to clinical examination. A complete physical examination at the beginning. Record BP, BP may be low in septic shock and myocarditis. Record pulse, pulse rate usually increases by 10 degrees Celsius rise in temperature as relative bradycardia is seen in enteric fever, brucellosis and viral infections. Relative tachycardia is seen in myocarditis, sepsis, hypovolemia and thyrotoxicosis. Record respiratory rate and SpO2. As high respiratory rate indicates respiratory pathology such acute respiratory distress syndrome, pneumonia etc. Examine for lymphadenopathy indicating tuberculosis, infectious mononucleosis, HIV lymphoma malignancy. Examine for skin and mucosal lesions, pallor, jaundice indicating hepatobiliary diseases. Examine for sternal tenderness indicating hematological malignancies. Examine for spinal tenderness indicating epidural abscess. Examine for clubbing indicating TB chronic suppurative lung diseases. Examine heart for any murmurs which indicates infective endocarditis. 
Examine abdomen for any tenderness which indicates deep abdominal infection. Examine for hepatosplenomegaly which indicates enteric fever, malaria, hepatitis and hemolytic anemia. Examine for splenomegaly alone which indicates malaria and hematological malignancies. Examine the fundus and retina for papilledema in meningitis, retinal relations in CMV infection, disseminated candidacies, and tuberculosis. Now moving on to investigations. Firstly check for common illnesses like TB, malaria, UTI, HIV, enteric fever etc. Secondly order for CBC test, your cytopenia suggests a pathological process involving bone marrow such as disseminated tuberculosis and hematological malignancies. High leukocyte account suggest leukemia. High ESR greater than 100 by Westergren method indicates active tuberculosis, collagen vascular disease and malignancy. One sputum examination if there are symptoms like cough and sputum production ask for gram stain, fungus stain malignant cells and culture or sensitivity. Two urine microscopy to rule out urinary tract infection. Three blood culture and sensitivity to for infection of both anaerobic and aerobic organisms. Four renal function test and liver function test must be done to rule out any involvement of liver and kidney. Five stool examination must be done to rule out any ova, parasites, and occult blood. Six chest x-ray must be done to look for tuberculosis pneumonia and sarcoidosis. Seven ECG and echocardiogram to look for infective endocarditis. Eight ultrasound sonography of abdomen and pelvis must be done to check for abdominal pathology, organomegaly, intra-abdominal lymphadenopathy, ascites, or any collection of pus. 9 CSF examination if suspecting meningitis. 10 CT or MRI scanning to look if any abdominal lymph glands meningitis and abscesses. 11 surgical procedures like laparoscopy and laparotomy might be required in undiagnosed cases. Now moving on to treatment. Treatment for a FUO varies depending on the cause. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, and antihistamines may also be used to treat FUOs that have no trace of underlying causes. Treatment must be symptomatic only, as blind antibiotic therapy leads to diagnosis of an occult infection turn more difficult. Steroid therapy may mask an inflammatory response without treating the underlying cause. When all the tests are negative and cause of fever remains undiagnosed a therapeutic trial may be indicated. Commonly undiagnosed cases of fever of unknown origin will spontaneously resolve. So that's all in this video. Thank you for watching, stay safe, take care and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.